Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and see how many solar panels are needed to save the climate, according to the person that wrote this article. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out how much platinum and silver and all these things are needed and how many cars could we build with the entire mine production of platinum? And what about silver? How much silver is it going to take to do what they want to do with photo solar photovoltaic uh, solar panels? So I'm just, I'm just doing this exercise because I, I know I claim a lot that we don't have the minerals in the ground to do what they want to do. So you know what? I'm just going to throw some numbers out there. And, and show you kind of where we're at and how much silver and platinum and other things they, they want to use. And I just use silver and platinum in this type of uh, scenario. So let's jump in and, and we'll, we'll get some data here. It says, how many solar panels do we need to save the climate? It says a zero carbon emissions energy system will rely mostly on low cost solar electricity, experts say. About 100 giant solar panel factories must be built by 2025 for the world to defossilize its energy supply by 2035. In 2019, it shows how a global energy system with a net zero carbon emissions can be achieved in the model solar photovoltaics, solar panels, supply 69% of the total global, global primary energy demand for all purposes in the year when zero emissions are achieved. The rest comes from wind power, biomass, and waste, hydroelectricity, geothermal power, and flying unicorns. His zero emissions scenario doesn't include nuclear power because it's simply too expensive. Breyer emphasizes, photovoltaic technology is becoming cheaper year by year. The construction costs of nuclear power plants, on the other hand, are rising. Moreover, it's much easier, faster, and less risky to install and operate solar power plants. So he's throwing down the gauntlet over here. <clears throat> so this is what he's got. He's got the cumulative global installed PV capacity, 2020 to 2035. Um, he's assuming that 69% of global electricity is supplied by photovoltaic modules in that year, and a total of 100 PV gigafactories, which with six, 60 gigawatts annual production capacity have been built worldwide by the end of 2024, including 15 such gigafactories in Europe. Uh, this is what his projections are. Uh, basically, we're going from a very small photovoltaic, and then we just blow out uh, to the upside for the photovoltaic output, the electricity production capacity or output from them. And that's the right-hand side. So on the left-hand side, this is the Sorry, the model of a climate neutral energy system by 2035, solar photovoltaic dominates. A cost optimized climate neutral energy system achieved worldwide in 2050 could be based entirely on renewable energy and 90% on renewable electricity. 70% of its chief solar photovoltaic. Can we accelerate the build out and get it done by 2035? And in this, the climate neutral electricity supply. This person's envisioning solar being the majority of it, about 70%, wind being a good other portion of it, water, bioenergy, geothermal, and others in this gray matter. They've got the global installed electricity generation capacity, a total of 78 terawatts, of which 63.4 terawatts is so solar vo photovoltaic. So I'm going to go down here. <clears throat> Uh, the solution that they are proposing uh, is to build 100 giant PV photovoltaic factories immediately. Uh, a prosperous, carbon-neutral global civilization with net zero emissions will be 90% powered by electricity. The LUT model estimates, in part directly, in part via synthetic fuels or e-fuels. And 69% of this electricity will come from solar photovoltaics. So what I wanted to get at is how much solar photovoltaics does this person want to use? So what, what in the article, this is what they said. They said, will we have built enough factories by 2024 to produce the required amount of solar panels by 2035? Not even close. 
Under current ind- industry plans, by 2024, only 400 gigawatts annual PV production capacity will be in place, and only about 15, 1,500 gigawatts of solar PV modules will already be have been produced and installed worldwide. To achieve a zero emission scenario by 2035, in which two thirds of global energy is produced from solar power, another 62,000 gigawatts of photovoltaic modules, 62 terawatts, must be produced and installed between 2025 and 2035. That's 6,200 gigawatts per year, every year from 2025 to 2035. So, what I did. And I just wanted to see how much silver is this guy really wanting out of the out of the earth? What is it going to take to build all these solar panels if we have this unicorn flying, you know, that, that unicorns are flying and that we are going to produce all of this stuff so quickly? So how much silver is it going to take? That's that's what I'm going to solve here. So I, I looked up and it says the average solar panel uses some 20 grams or 0.643 troy ounces of silver. Two thirds of an ounce of silver in every solar panel may not sound costly given today's silver sprout price. Most standard panels are between 230 and 275 watts, while SunPower manufactures high efficiency equipment in the range of 327 to 345. What I took was 300 watts. I just split it between the two as an an average. So he wants 62,000 gigawatts, and in watts, it's 6.2 times 10 to the 13th. That's how many watts of power they want to generate from solar panels. So what I did is I took that amount of power, the 6.2 times 10 to the 13 watts, divided it by the average of 300 watts per solar panel. So it takes roughly uh, 206,666,666,666 solar panels needed to produce that amount of energy or power. Now, I took that amount of solar panels and multiplied it by 0.643 troy ounces. And what that comes out to is 132,886,666,666 ounces of silver, silver needed to meet all of this solar power demand. So the demand for silver would be that amount. So what I looked at is I grabbed some data. It says, again, in case you didn't know, one ton is equal to 32,150 troy ounces. Thus, there have been just slightly more than 50 billion troy ounces of silver mined in history. Again, most physical silver mined over time has been lost to industrial use and gone unrecycled. So in, in all of human history, since June 30th of 2019, humans have extracted 50 billion troy ounces of silver ever. But in this new scenario where we want to build out uh, solar panels, we want to extract 132 billion, 886 million, 666,000, which is 2.65 times more silver that, that we want to use in only solar panels than we've ever mined in history. So in order to hit this guy's so, uh, solar photovoltaics, um, we need to find a lot more silver than we've ever mined in history and then mine it just for solar photo- photovoltaics. Um, no other, nothing else would, would, would be able to consume silver because we would put 100%, well, we'd put 200 <laughs> We put 365%. No, is that right? Hold on. No, 165% would be a percentage. 2.65 times the amount ever mined needs to go to these solar panels that they want to build. Now, I also did a little platinum thing. Uh, I wanted to see how many cars uh, could be made of everything that's been mined in platinum to date. So it says, currently, hydrogen vehicles need about 50 grams of platinum to operate that serves as a catalyst in their fuel cells compared to traditional vehicles, which only use about 5 grams in their catalytic converters. Officially discovered in 18th century, modern mining experts estimate that over 15 times more gold and about 150 times more silver have been mined than platinum throughout time. 
Mining experts also estimate that just over 10,000 tons of platinum have ever been mined by man. So when looking at um, 10,000 tons, in troy ounces, that is 2.91 times 10 to the eighth of uh, troy ounces. So what I took is I converted troy ounces into uh, grams. So that's your, your troy ounces into grams. And then I took the grams and divided it by 50 uh, because 50 was, it was 50 grams of platinum to operate a fuel cell hydrogen vehicle. So we could get uh, roughly 181,439,021 fuel cell vehicles. And that's the fuel cell vehicles using the entire mined production and history of platinum. But one of the problems is in South Africa, where 80% of the platinum comes from, uh, the peak output was in 2006, and it's been declining ever since. Uh, what this means is that it's potential that we've hit peak platinum. So if we were to take all of the platinum ever mined in history, we can make 181.5 million vehicles, roughly. Now, looking at how many vehicles are out there, the U.S. Publisher Awards estimates that in two, uh, 2019, there were 1.4 billion motor vehicles in the in, in in use in the world. So 181 million. So if we were to do a quick math here, um, 181 million divided by the fleet of 1.4 billion uh, is about a fuel cell vehicles. We could replace roughly about 13 percent of what's out there. And I don't know what the US, what what the vehicle turnover rate is. It's probably, you know, a, a good single digit percent or something. But it's it's thirteen percent, and that's using the entire mined production of platinum in in human history. So then I also said, well, you know, what what how many vehicles do they expect to make of electric vehicles? Because that also uses a lot of silver. So it's expected that there will be one hundred fifteen million vehicles in the global electric vehicle fleet by twenty thirty up from an estimated 8.5 million units in 2020. The average combustible, combustible engine vehicle uses 18 to 25 grams of silver compared to the typical EV, which requires up to 50 grams of silver per vehicle. So what I used is I used the estimate. I said, um, we've got 50, 50 grams per vehicle times 115 million vehicles. And this would be the troy ounces that are needed uh, for electric vehicles to 2030. Uh, that is three, three, 184 million, 866,792 ounces of, of silver in electric vehicles alone by 2030. So uh, what I'm getting at here is uh, we don't have the minerals to do what they want. A and, and even if we were to go down this path, what's going to happen is... Um, we are going to be extracting lower and lower ore grades of all this stuff, which means that the energy input will go up exponentially. Uh, so to actually pull these ounces out of the ground, you're going to have to have far greater amounts of energy to get it out of the ground uh, if we constrain ourselves to only Earth. So I, I, I can't, I don't see how this is going to work. Because that is also deploying all of the ounces that we've ever have mined in history times, I don't know, maybe three times the amount that we've ever mined in history, which if you look back, were all the highest ore grades. So we had, a t it was the most fertile land with the highest concentrations of silver everywhere, with the highest amount of energy that we've ever seen in history in terms of energy return on investment of fossil fuels that we could grab this stuff out of the earth at probably some of the fastest rates that we could grab. What is the likelihood of getting this much silver that quickly with massively declining ore grades? I don't think it's going to happen. So what, what I think is going to happen is that we're going to go to less mineral intensive solutions that are very high energy dense sources like nuclear. And I don't think we can go any which way. I think we can do some of this, but I don't think we can go anywhere near the amounts that they think they can do. Not even close. Maybe we can get 10% of it. Maybe. At best.
Uh, but that world's going to look incre- incredibly different than what they're projecting. Also, uh, what they've done with wind and what they're doing with solar <clears throat> is that not every solar panel, when you install it, it's the same. Uh, you're going to be subject to environmental conditions that are different <clears throat> depending on where you install them. We've already high graded everywhere that's best in this world for wind and solar. And then we're going to get a decline in output from wherever else we install these things in the world. So we probably have to make more than what they maybe are estimating to get a reliable amount of power <clears throat> that the world wants and needs. So I don't have the answer here, guys, for you, but uh, I do think that platinum and silver and all of these minerals that we can get um, in our hands are going to be quite valuable in the future, especially if we try doing this. And they're talking about trying to do this as fast as possible. So think in maybe 10 or 15 years. And if we've got a whole bunch of us buying all this silver and taking it off the market or, or platinum or whatever it is, uh, that's just more demand, investment demand, um, that reduces the available ounces to, to use. So we'll, we'll see what happens. And, and I'm, I'm of the sort that they can't do this, that this option will not be successful, and that the declining investment in oil and fossil fuels is going to set up a massive squeeze in oil, in coal, in uranium, or, or nuclear, I should say, nuclear and uranium, because we don't have the minerals to do all this. And I just used silver and platinum as an example. Um, you can use any, you know, other minerals like copper, you can use nickel, you can use some of these other ones, and it's it's going to be the same, same thing. They're going to run into constraints building the amount that they want to build in electric vehicles and renewables for a variety and a slew of different minerals. And I don't think they're going to be successful to overcome as many shortages of minerals that there is going to be across the board with substitution and other designs. I, I just don't see that. But obviously, there's a lot of things that we can do from an efficiency perspective that can drastically reduce the amount used. The only problem is the more efficient something gets, the more widely adopted it becomes, and usually the, the consumption goes up, not down. Hopefully, you guys enjoy the clip. Give me a thumbs up if you guys like it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.